speaking of universes, uh, there, there was a time when people believed that the heavens up there were the province of God, and whatever was going on in there was unknowable, and it would be basically sinful to find out. Uh, you point out that, that with gravity, uh, well, why don't you just, just briefly, Newton comes along, and then everything changes. Yeah, yeah, so you look up, and the planets are going forward against the background stars, and then backwards, and we call that, there's a word for that, retrograde, and they do a loop the loop, and nobody understands it. And the fact that no one understands it is presented as evidence f in some bits of scholarship, as evidence for the divinity of the heavens, because that is the handiwork of God, and we are mortal, and God is immortal, and omniscient, and so we can't possibly know the mind of God. Mm -hmm. So you're just content just in your ignorance watching planets. There were some attempts at this with the geocentric epicycles and all of this, but this was, a, it was well accepted that you'll never understand. Newton comes along, writes down equations of motion, equations of gravity, and kind of on a dare, he invents integral and differential calculus. <laughs> Then he turned 26. <laughs> this is why Isaac Newton is my man, okay? <laughs> Just to make that clear, Okay. among many reasons. But so he writes down these equations and he can now demonstrate full knowledge of how, why, and where, and what the planets are doing. And so potent was his new theory of gravity that it worked for moons of Jupiter orbiting Jupiter not just planets orbiting the sun. And this was the first indication, maybe this is not just a local truth, that maybe it applies across the universe. And this was a little bit of heresy, mm. thought by some. That, in fact, Newton was accused by some say, uh, uh, Isaac, you've left nothing for God to do. <laughs> and that's simultaneously a, a dig at him, but also quite a compliment, that he can actually understand the mind of God well, that's where, that's where, this is where it got interesting. Then you went off, I mean, everybody knows that gravity is apparently is ubiquitous and, and universal. But then you went and asked about chemistry and physics, constants, and, and I hadn't really thought about that before. Is, is the chemistry of the sun and the chemistry of the earth and the chemistry of the furthest thing you can think of, uh, are the laws about bonds and pairings, and so, are they the same everywhere without exception? It was not obvious. There's no, there's no tablet in the sky that required that the laws of physics we discover on Earth's surface would apply elsewhere. Mm. If they were different on Earth than on the moon and on the sun, I, I suppose we could deal with that. But what a remarkable fact that it is the same. Well, wait a second. Like, you've seen that thing on, on Jupiter, that storm that never quits. The, uh, the big red thing, the big... Yeah, we, we call it the red spot on Jupiter, we call it... Jupiter's red spot. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> that's how we roll. <laughs> that thing is... Spots on the sun, sunspots. See? <laughs> see? See how... Any geologist or <laughs> chemist in the audience? Geologist? But, but can you, you should be jealous of this fact. Because you guys name stuff that nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. 